In this tutorial, we will look at using layers and multiple shapes in Roto and Roto Paint. This area here lists all the shapes and paint strokes used in the node. So I'll start by creating a simple ellipse, and its name appears, as we have seen before, in the shape layer list. So I'll create a second ellipse on top, but because I have the GL colour set to white, I can't see what I'm drawing. So I'll just change the colour here to something that is visible, then I'll delete that shape and I'll redraw it. Now in the list we have two shapes. The new one is on top of the last as the list works top down the same as in Photoshop. Let's just click on it to rename it. Now select the root layer and down here I can create a group and I can drag these shapes into that group. I'll just rename the group Now if I right click over a shape, I get options to cut, copy and paste. I can paste between different nodes. In this case, I want to duplicate the shape. I'll just line it up. And now I'll create just one more shape. But I've created this outside of the group as the group wasn't selected. So I'll move it into the group and note that it goes down to the bottom. In this case I want it further up, so I'll drag it to the top and I'll just rename it. Now if I select a shape, I can change its colour or other attributes. This time I'll take a second shape and I'll change its blending mode. Or I can shift select more than one and change all their colours or blending modes etc. in one go. This, of course, can make everyone very happy indeed. Now let's have a quick look at the different layers of transformations that we can apply. Here we can use the Shapes tools to apply transformations, or we can use the Shapes Transform tab and use additional transformations, or we can go further and put them in a layer and add another layer of transformation and we can do this as deep as we like. So back to Smiley and select the head group and in addition to the shapes transform we can use the groups transform tab to rotate, scale, etc. the group in one go. As auto key is on at the top here I'm actually adding a secondary level of animation. This is most useful when applying tracking data which you can see in the wire removal tutorial. Stepping back into the group, I can now use the Mouths Transform tab and we can continue to add these extra layers of animation as deep as we wish to go. Now I want to work on the corner of this mouth here, but it's difficult to select these points without selecting unwanted points on the other shape. So I'm going to lock that shape here, which I can also do up here. And now I can select these points I want easily. Again, the same problem occurs up here. So I'll lock these shapes and now I can reposition the shape. Lastly, I'll create a keyframe at the end here. Amazing. Now I'll take our group and move it across by minus 450 pixels. And as you can see, it's put a keyframe in here. So at this point I want to stop animating so I'll turn off Auto key and I'll remove the animation. I'll create a second shape to the right of it, but because I am still inside the group, this shape is being affected by the animation of the group. This is not what I want. So I'll just delete that shape, step out of the group and redraw it. 
Now this time I want to use this shape for something new to Nuke 6.1. So rather than use it as a colour, I'm going to select foreground from this menu and go into the clone tab and change the translation parameters. I now have a snapshot of the foreground inside this shape. Everything I do to the first group is cloned into this shape. Of course if I alter the shape it also affects the area cloned, including if I go into feathering. In the next tutorial we will move on to animation in the rotor paint node.